Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world as we are getting to the shortest and darkest days of the year. Oh, and speaking of dark days, wow, that's a... That's not pleasant. I don't like you being there. I guess we need to have some more lanterns on our walls here. And that might actually be one of the things that we do today, now that I think about it. But first, a quick review of last episode. We brought our animals home, and then we built some entrances into our tool hallway and our barn here. And we now have, let me get up over here somewhere, pigs galore, or three pigs at least. And then we have a number of sheep in this enclosure over here. We have five females and one male, and they are all munching away happily at the stack plus of flax we put in there. So they should give us some babies relatively soon. And actually, I should probably leave these ladders here because we're going to need them to get up and down from the walls. We also, of course, have a ton of chickens in here. And they are, wow, they're laying eggs like crazy. And they already need some more food. Wow. They probably also need a bit of a culling here too. But I'll get to that later. And after we got the animals home and built our little entrances here, we came up to the roof and we jazzed the roof up. So now we have some bees up here and we don't need to worry about making skeps until spring. So we'll get that done at some point here. And we also have some cattails that we don't have to go so far to collect them like down to the water there and the various ponds that scatter the landscape here. Now this episode, what are we doing this episode? Well, I was hoping that 1.19 would be out by now or at least very, very soon and that we would be able to maybe identify some things that we would want to put in this space here. But as it stands, we are still on 1.19 preview or rather release candidate four. And so I am not yet comfortable upgrading because we don't have a full 1.19.0 stable release out just yet. So this space is going to stay empty a little bit longer. Now, instead, I think today we're going to attend to a few things that have been on my mind for a little while now, some of them growing in intensity. And that is, I want to work on most of the inside of our house a little bit and tend to some things that just have needed tending, like this really blocky ceiling here and maybe even our room. I would like to update our decor now that we have access to some of the materials that I was missing at the time that I built this room. I might like to get into some different decor in here. And I'd also like to address this weird sort of archway here where this just kind of meets up here in the middle and doesn't do anything with it. I think we need to fix that up too. And also I think I've decided what to do about this wall right here. I also need to profusely, profusely get on my knees and apologize to all of you because of a promise that I made a long time ago. One that I've kept for the most part, and that is chimneys. Because I have made, as promised, a lot of chimneys for all of our functional fireplaces and other fire burning areas, except one. And that is the kitchen fireplace. The smoke from here goes nowhere, and we've just been choking and hacking and coughing on fumes and smoke for such a long time that I've kind of just gotten used to it. But no more. No longer, I say. It is time for us to have a bona fide chimney that comes out of our house roughly where that kitchen is. And it should basically be right around here, as I recall. So I think we'll make some room in here for a chimney once I double check and make sure that this is actually above the kitchen or close enough. And yeah, that's going to be kind of the list of things. So we may also get around to putting out some more lighting outside because of things like this, which I would rather avoid. And so I think we'll just have a nice cozy episode today. And you know, I could almost go for some decoration around this arch here. Maybe some of the blue clay bricks could fit in here really well. Yeah, I think we should try that. Ah, but I am reminded that there is something that's been going on down here for a while, and it is finally time to check in and confirm that yes, we can in fact make blue cheese down here, as long as the exterior temperature, the ambient temperature, is low enough. And that basically happens starting around late September. So yeah, if we make some blue cheese, we can of course make it down here now. And we're going to put it on the shelf next to these guys. As you can see, they get a bit of a bonus to their 
shelf life. We have 20.8 years versus 16.6. And these two ripened pretty close together. I'd say these ripened maybe a week or so before these guys did. And these guys are pretty close too, so they'll be about 17 years. So as you can see, the benefits of blue cheese versus cheddar aren't huge as far as shelf life goes, but it has its drawbacks. So if we go ahead and slice this up, we now have four each that last 1.7 years in our inventory, or 2.1 years. So again, about a roughly, what, 15% increase. But look at the satiation. Cheddar cheese per slice has 240 satiation, but with the blue cheese, we lose 40 satiation. So we are losing basically 16% satiation in return for about the same amount of extra shelf life. And frankly, given the shelf life of cheddar cheese and the fact that we can wax it to basically double shelf life, I just don't see much of a reason to bother with blue cheese, except for as like a novelty thing, and to say that we did it. Oh, nice. We can actually put cheese wedges on the shelf too. And they last just as long. Huh. That's wild. There we go. Now we will get into how to cook with this stuff because you can use it in meals, although you don't get a food or satiation bonus from it. Like most things give 50% more satiation in meals. Cheese does not for some reason, and I don't really know why. Maybe it's an oversight. Maybe it's intentional. No idea. But you can use them in pies and you can use them in certain specific meals, but not all of them. So we'll go over that when I have a few fewer uh, crocs full of food here and a little bit less extra food that's just needing to get cooked here real soon before we move on to cheese that keeps forever. So let's get started on our kitchen chimney here. Let's line ourselves up here and we are at negative 792, negative 251. That puts us, ah, right there. Okay. That's a pretty good spot, I think. That puts us, that puts us right inside that block here. So I'm thinking what we can do is let's go down into our little cave down here and see where that puts us inside here. 251, that would put us inside this greenhouse, which I don't like. So what I might do is we might just put it inside this wall here and have it come up like right underneath the windmill. So our wall is right here. We could put this chimney right here and that would fit. So let's go ahead and do it. We're gonna break this guy and temporarily turn this into a not greenhouse by doing a bit of this. But we're just going to do that to show that our chimney is there. Then we need a few more blocks in order to bring the chimney up and make it visible outside the house. I think that's probably a pretty good spot. Maybe one more. So we're not actually blowing smoke right onto our roof. And then I think the chimney block or the smokestack block. Nope, it is not that. Ah, it takes clay, not mortar. Okay. And up we go and bloop. Let's do it the other direction, I think. So I call these our directional. There we go. Very nice. We now have a bona fide chimney coming out of our house. Now right here, that is, I believe, a chiseled slab, isn't it? I'm going to tuck one of these in here. No, I'm not going to do that. We're just going to tuck, I think, this guy back in here so we don't have like a weird gap right there. That works out pretty well, I think. All right, chimney done. Next on the list, I think we're going to hit the living room out front and get rid of that really blocky staircase ceiling and make a slightly less blocky staircase ceiling. And for that, we will need our hammer and our chisel, as well as the steel pantograph with 5,000 durability. And what's nice is we already have a template for our sloped ceiling right here. Take a picture of you and we can go and we can paste this in here on basically any one of these. And we'll fill that one in later, but look at that, it's even in the right orientation. Now this will pop off our lantern, or it will not. <laughs> it hasn't realized it's doom yet. And let's get two pieces of limestone to fill in those dirt blocks there. 
But I want to get our lantern back up here, what was before, but we can't yet, can we? No, we need to figure out how to attach it. And for that reason, I brought along a bit of slate rock. And we're going to take this down here. I'm going to just set this up right here. So that we can then figure out where to chisel a bit of a bump of slate. As if we had like a iron bar sticking out to connect to. And it shouldn't take much. This just needs a tiny little, what looks to be a two by three rectangle centered here. So let's see if we can get something like that going on and do something a bit like this and maybe even a little larger just to make it look like it's solidly supported there. And now we should be able to, no, no. See if we can get this actually up here or not. A more solid face. Okay, well, let's give it a little bit more space. Hey, there we go. Okay, so it was a two by four and it wasn't quite at the top. Okay, so it is still two by three. Can I make you a little bit smaller? I can, okay. Just have to get the right actual size and location and it should work just fine, okay. Let's do something like that. There we go, now we have a proper lantern hung from the ceiling, rather jutting out from the ceiling, and looks like it is pretty solidly supported there on some kind of iron mounting device. Perfect. Now, while we still have our chisel and hammer handy, let's hop out here. We have plenty of light out here, so we don't have to worry about this too much. These are all already chiseled blocks. Let's see about adding in some blue clay bricks here, all around these, like so, and then we will add some blue clay in here. Oh yes, absolutely. I could even almost do something like this. Yeah, I think I like that a lot. Get that going on there, finish out that brick and that brick. And we have a nicely lined doorway here. I like it. I like the three extra fire clay bricks poking through here. I think I should like that a lot. Okay, so our next victims are going to be this wall here and this archway right here. Now, there's a bit of a problem is that I can't adjust this acacia here because since we attached it to chiseled blocks, it is now basically permanently affixed to those blocks. So if we remove this block here, which is actually stone, apparently, you'll see that the beams go with it, or the chair rail goes with it. You put it back, and they're back. And there's not much we can do about that. So we're going to work with what we have here. We could just make a thicker door frame, like a four voxel or three voxel wide door frame, and have it like a little archway here. That's one possibility. I also thought about doing some more acacia beams just up the middle of this. I didn't like that idea because that would look a little thin up here. So I am thinking, let's try, let's try a different color archway here. I'm kind of leaning toward sandstone because we have a lot of like bright red, like warm, deep colors here, and then neutrals. And the only bright, like, bright fiery color we have is a bit of sandstone in here and not a whole lot of it. But I think if we do like a sandstone archway here to support this door or this frame here, I think it could look pretty good and help bring some of this color up into this room a little bit. And then for this wall, we are going to simply take this design here and chisel it into the wall with a bit of a gap right here. We're going to stop a little bit short to make room for this sort of column thing we have going on here. And then same at this end here, we'll kind of cut it short, probably about one quarter of a block here for the very same reason. So luckily I have a bunch of spare acacia beams. I have tons of oak. And if we need to dip into our other oak, we certainly can. And then we need some sandstone. And I think we have a little bit of sandstone lying around. Mm, I don't know if we have enough. Or maybe, we'll see. 
And let's start with this wall because it's pretty simple. And we're going to be a little bit careful because we don't want to remove the sort of plaster on this side of it, the limestone, plaster stone. And I was thinking it might be nice to have this kind of continue up here. We would need to replace this block. That's probably okay. I don't know. It might also be better to just put some pictures up here and have this actually not be a blank wall. Yeah. We have a bunch of these, and they're just sort of doing nothing in a chest over here. Maybe these are pictures of places we've been. So we could have like a picture here, here, and here. So maybe, maybe this one, which is the bog fort, maybe this is the ruin we saw on the way to the south that one time when we were in the very rainy redwoods areas. We found like a, a ruin. That could be that. What are you? Hunter in the forest. Maybe this is us looking through the forest, looking for things to eat and deer to hunt. There are no deer, whatever. And this, of course, is a painting of our voyage by canoe and by boat as we passed by a castle ruin. Yeah, I like that. That's actually pretty cool. Now, since these are already really thin, I think we can actually get away with using oak slabs here. So let's try it and see how it works out. We're going to add a slab to you. And then we should be able to just take out some of this. And let's just see about doing this up to wherever the block ends. And maybe if we were being less brainless, we could get our hand planer out and do this the easy cheesy way. And then you get a bit of a gentler touch. And then let's go ahead and add our oak slab material in. And this is set to be done by hand, which is fine. Except it doesn't because we can just do this. And look at that. Now, I am thinking it might be cool to mirror this design over here, right on this corner here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just take a little bit out of this block here down to the floor and match that on this side. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see, do we do something like this and bring it up here? I don't think we do. Let's just get our support beams in here and see how that looks. We'll start there, go across to there. Oop, oh no. Oh no. I done goofed now. <laughs> well, that sticks through there. Great, I love it. Let's see if we can get this to actually... Oh wow, it doesn't want to go. That's irritating. Hmm. Well, that works, I guess. <laughs> we do have this weirdness going on here, but that's fine. We'll never see it, right? Don't look at it. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with that. I wouldn't mind being able to fit like a picture up here, but again, since this is not the face of a block, like they are here, a picture simply will not fit here. So let's get working on this spot here. I am leaning toward sandstone. Do I like that as like a transitional color or is it a bit too much? You know what? You know what? I could skip the sandstone. This is a bit too much. Let's go for some pine because we have pine right here. And we'll just have a different shaped archway here and do it out of pine. And we should be able to just do that for those. Yep. Let's go ahead and chisel these. Let's make a bit of a doorway to get through here. Let's just try adding this to this block here. It does go horizontal. Let's go and grab one more piece of pine. And we'll simply add you to this block here. So let's get our hand planer back out. We're going to push this in until we see the acacia. Okay, so we're going to come out one like that. There we go. I am thinking we bring this in a little bit off the corner like that. And we can kind of do the same here. Yeah. Oops. Ah, we have some Z fighting going on. Okay. Well, not Z fighting, but Z winning, apparently. So let's just do that. That'll work out pretty well, I think. And then for this, we're going to have to get the chisel out manually, and we will add in the appropriate wood here. It's going to be a real pain, but that's okay. It'll be worth the effort. Oh, 
Okay, and there we have a little archway. I think that fits a lot better than the sandstone ever would have. And helps cover up the weirdness of the connection between this, well, <laughs> this oak plank here, quote, quote, the, was this clay stone rock, and then the oak here. So it just sort of hides that weird join up, and now I think it fits. Even though it's a bit different from our usual door frames here, I like it because it's the right color, and it is still round. Okay, with our sitting room here all done and behind us, it is time to move on to our bedroom over here. And I've kind of been thinking about our decor in here, and it's okay. It's fine. It gets the job done. But there are some improvements I'd like to make to just make this a bit less childish. This looks sort of like a child's room with these sort of scattered wallpaper on here. So I was thinking it could be fun to do a variation on what I was originally going to do with this, which was to make sort of like a, like a mountainous sort of tape around here above the walnut beam. So we're going to take these down too, because they're neat, but I think just scattered like this, they're a bit weird looking. It might be worth putting them on some kind of shelf here, like maybe a nightstand over on this side. Maybe even, as someone suggested, maybe we could put some candles in here instead of our lantern. Now, we might need some more peridoite, or peridoite, as it were. And let's grab some of the non-chiseled stuff as well. The cobblestone might actually come in handy. I don't know yet. And then we might also need some more sand to fill it in. See, what I had originally designed here was I was going to have a bit of a mountainous design here. And I was going to have the foreground mountains be nice and dark, the midgrounds be lighter, and then the background mountains be lighter as if they were feeding off into the distance. The problem is that these polished colors, these colors from the polished blocks here, at the edges of the block, let's see, the block ends here. They become a lot lighter because of that polished edge, except that on two of the sides, they're darker, and on two of the sides, they are lighter. And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to not worry about that. We're going to have those be down here really low, where the mountains kind of just slope downward into nothing. And that should sort of hide that problem from us, I think. And we'll do that the whole way around here mostly by copying and pasting it and then kind of re-adding things where we need to. Now, the troubling part about this is going to be that we don't have all of the same materials in all the same orders for all these blocks. As you can see, we have limestone, peridoite, peridoite sand, pine planks, and church stone bricks here. But over here, we have limestone, blue clay bricks, and church stone. So if we just add the colors of peridoite in here, and then we copy them. Well, it's going to copy the pattern from these first three that we're going to be using to make this pattern over to these first three over here. So I think I'm a bit undecided. I might just do some manual touch up on some of these places that need to have it done. And we'll call it a day. And probably over on this wall will be where we do the majority of our copying and pasting because we can get these in here in the order that we need to. Okay, everyone, here is our new and improved bedroom with much, much cleaner walls. Now, as I recall, we couldn't actually put any tables in the corner here because of these, right? 
but I think what we'll do is we'll probably leave it where it is now. And we'll put a planter in that corner with something bright in it, like daisies, maybe? But since one of you suggested a while ago that I should do some candles, I think 10 is the limit on a single table. It is 9. So there we have a much warmer light source there. Let's take our lantern off. That's pretty cute. It's a little cluttered here, but I don't mind it. And these are only a little dimmer than a lantern. I think they're like light level 14 or so when they're all like this. But we could maybe put... We can't put anything here. So I guess that's probably fine. We could maybe hang our lantern from here as well. And that way we have both the bright light and the candles. But I don't think it's that important, honestly. Because, again, drifters in this version, and actually even, I think, 1.17, do not just spawn in darkness. They require a rift nearby. So I think having a nice dimly lit bedroom will help us sleep at night. Now, you will notice that I decided to remove the sand part of our mountains here. I think it looks better having a bit of a shorter strip around here rather than the taller one. And the sand was too hard to really see compared to the regular peridoite. So I figured we'll just keep the two mountain layers. And if they ever come out with a nice, really light, halfway between sand and limestone color, then we can come in later and add that in here. So let's get that planter, drop that in the corner, and let's get that filled in with something bright. Let's see. I am leaning toward probably the wild daisies. Although some cornflower or like golden poppy could be nice too. Let's take one of each of these. And let's just tuck you in the corner at a bit of an angle. And let's see. Do we like the cat mint, first of all? I don't mind, but it gets a bit lost because we have these similar dark colors flanking it. So I'm going to say no to that one. Let's try cornflower. Ooh, those are nice and bright. I do like that, although we have a lot of blue flanking it again, so I won't say no to this one, but I want to see if I like the other options better. Golden poppies, it's your turn. No. Too much orange and red in this room already. This gets a bit too much. I am thinking the daisies are going to be it. Oh, yes, absolutely. Without question, daisies are almost always a great option here because... There are a few places you get such a nice yellow and white and the green to sort of just brighten up the room. So yes, daisies it is. And now because we don't have these leaves scattered up here, we kind of have some options for decorating the walls maybe at some point with either paintings, if we get some more paintings, or with shelves that we can cover in different things. So if you guys have any ideas for what you want to see in the bedroom, let me know. We could be put some crystals over our bed or maybe even like a dream catcher. That could be kind of fun, actually. Put that over our bed to catch our dreams at night. And yeah, overall, I am much more satisfied with our little room here. Now, I think the last thing I want to touch on in the episode today is, as I said, the outdoor lighting. Oh, yes. We have exactly as many as I was hoping. Where did I put those candles? I made seven candles and I put them promptly away. Ah, you are still here. So I was thinking of putting some more bronze lanterns out here, but I was thinking, what if we replace all of our tin bronze lanterns outside with some bismuth bronze lanterns? Because being out here in the snow and rain, they're going to get weathered. And I think that the bismuth bronze makes for a great, like, partly oxidized look for the bronze. So I was thinking, let's make seven of these, and that will help us light up some of these areas out here and replace at least some of these outdoor tin bronze lanterns. I don't know that we'll have enough to do them all because we have uh, we have four out here. Yeah, I think these four might have to wait until we get some more business bronze going on and also maybe some more wind because this is not going to be a super fast. Well, it's near gale. Just change. It's kind of really going up and down. Fresh breeze near gale. <laughs> it's really mercurial. But let's get what we can done here. And probably between episodes, I will cast us some more ingots of bismuth bronze. And that way we can get going and get some more outdoor lanterns going on. But for now, I'm going to hammer these out. Well, I'm going to make the wind hammer them out. And then we are going to get our lanterns placed.
All right, and after a few minutes of hammering out plates, we have seven bismuth bronze lanterns. Now, I think we're not going to put these in their final places necessarily, like some of these, like this one here, is just going here to try to stop rifts from spawning here. But I think some of these will be going in their final destinations. No, not that kind of final destination, hopefully. I do think we want one somewhere out here. Maybe hang off of that. That way we don't end up with rifts over our smithy and spawning drifters into it. We could probably use one here too. And for now, we'll tuck you maybe like there. Now we will of course need one over here. And you know what? I think temporarily what we can do is let's go get one of the 18,000 maple fences that we have. And let's use a couple of those. All right, so fence post here, lantern, there. Fence post, say, right in the middle here, I think. Maybe even right up here. Lantern, also there. And then for some of these, like I guess we come out here and maybe do a fence post, say, right here. Nope, because it's going to connect to the dirt wall there. Let's get rid of that. And lantern there. And we'll tuck, say, one of these here, one of these over here, and one of these here on this corner. I do still think we need about, I don't know, a dozen or two more lanterns to fully light the area up, but I think it's a pretty good start. Take our lantern off our bar. Yeah, that's a very cheery Christmassy look there, isn't it? Well, everyone, that's going to about do it for this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. I hope you enjoyed this episode about working on small projects around the house, sprucing up corners that needed a bit of sprucing up, and just generally improving our little lives here in this hobbit hole. If you enjoyed the episode, let me know by leaving a like or a comment in the section below. And I'd love to have you subscribe if that's your thing. As always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.